And good afternoon, everyone. Uh, we've got a treat for you today. Uh, my name is Helena. Uh, I am one half of Speaker Insight, where we help speakers, authors and coaches to build a business on your terms. And that actively is what we are about to do. So you can see I have two guests with me, um, but it means I'm also driving the show on my own. So you are going to have to bear with me whilst I share this out to everybody. Uh, as we go. I'm going to let these two gents introduce themselves very shortly. Um, but first off, for those of you who are coming along and watching live, please do a hashtag replay if you have not, uh, if you're not joining us live and you're watching this later, maybe even a year down the line, who knows. But do a hashtag replay because uh, we like to know that and we do like you to, you know, if you've got questions or anything like that, tag us in, in, in the feed because that also sort of works. I'm about to share this out into um, into the Connection Hub, which is, hi Fiona, nice to see that you've made it along. I'm about to share this out into the Connection Hub where we have the conversation. So, you know, the, this is the feed that actively goes on, but the Connection Hub is actually much more uh, the place where the conversations take place. So do let me uh, do that. But it, so in the meanwhile, whilst I'm doing that, tell us the buzz in your business. What's exciting? What's happening? What's actually moving along? I'll tell you a tiny bit of hours. Kelly is not here. Uh, Kelly is uh, currently uh, enjoying the delights that the UK has to offer. It is her anniversary week and usually they go away somewhere for their anniversary. But given that they technically, uh, she and Rich technically got married in Spain, the UK hasn't yet made that list. So they are having an anniversary week off. So you get me and these two gents uh, instead. And uh, I'm in the middle of packing up boxes because I'm moving. Uh, so there's been a lot of shuffling around in Speaker Insight, but that's pretty much the highlight of our of our um, take. Uh, let me introduce, I don't know which one of you is going to say hello first. Uh, cool. <laughs> Uh, well, hello. <laughs> I'm Rob. <laughs> okay, so Rob, take it away. What's the buzz in your business? And then I'll get on to asking you questions about um, how often you speak to your audience, which is what we're going to be talking about, but specifically around email. So Rob, take it away and I shall go and share things. I think my favorite like bit of buzz in the business right now is every day we wake up with, obviously we've got customers on, on a whole bunch of different time zones to us, which means that a lot of people are working through the night and posting things. So when we wake up on a morning and we go and check out like the Facebook group for, we've got a, a membership community for people who do email marketing to promote their products and services called the League of Extraordinary Email Marketers. And inside the Facebook group for the League, we've every day literally every day we wake up and see somebody's posted some sort of breakthrough they've had which was for us through the night when they posted it sometimes or very very early in the morning in the uk and they've go ahead and i've just we saw one the other day i'm just thinking off the top of my head somebody had increased their open rate of their emails by 10 percent uh, in a 30-day period click-through rates up by nine percent or maybe they were the other way around maybe but those two numbers and that was that's that was amazing so there's a massive buzz for me i think when you wake up and you see somebody's been doing the thing that you've done for a really long time and you've seen great results with it and we shared it for the first time and then they've picked it up and they've got amazing results with it so that's that's massive buzz for me that's really fantastic well done you and hopefully that's whetted other people's um uh, appetite for it. Uh, hello to Brian, who's made it along from Blackpool. Uh, so we've got Glasgow and Blackpool both both here right now. So they're probably intrigued and excited to hear that. Uh, All yeah, the so, are represented. Uh, for sure, for sure. So what about you? Me? Oh, uh, that, and who, that, who have, you be? Yeah, that, that was my buzz as well. Rob's <laughs> looking you. I was busy thinking that. I hope no one's tuned in thinking, ooh, Kelly's changed her hair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, but, I mean, the thing is, what I really enjoy is rather than just building a business, it's and one of the things that you guys are, are brilliant at, the pair of you, is creating a community. And it's nice. Yeah, we create resources and we, we're coaching people who are selling um, their expertise, their coaching programs, their courses, whatever. Um, and and, and we, we coach them every single month. But when you've got other members diving in and actually coaching people, each other. Um, mm. it, what I really love when they say, actually, I learned this from the guys, or I learned this from the guys. They put the, and they're, they're sort of helping each other. That's, that's really nice as well. I mean, we have a community of people who you actually like hanging around with. Um, I, re I really love it. It's it's just amazing, and I absolutely love that for you. And 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 it is. It's about 
you know, the thing that furthers everybody's business is the fact that we are all learning from each other. You know, the if so, if one person does something and you go, hang on a minute, I could do that with a slight tweak or two. You know, because Kelly and I, as you well know, don't believe in cookie cutter approaches. You know, as speakers, authors and coaches, you know, it is so easy to do, you know, a business that's stuck together with sticky tape and, you know, this tactic plus that tactic equals magic is the promise and it just doesn't happen it's actually more about how do we put that together how what what can I see that somebody else is doing that I could go well how would that work in my specific business or for my audience in that way which is one of the reasons that you know we we got excited when we heard about you uh, from we have some similar contacts and connections which is always good um, and we also really like the fact that you're based in the UK you know sort of like because there are kindred souls further up north admittedly um, you know that, that, that actively are around so before I say anything else uh, why don't you go ahead and tell everybody listening a little bit about your backstory and how you found this you know I think people are beginning to get that email marketing is your thing but how did you fall into that niche because it's not what people might think <laughs> no <laughs> it's not so it's a bit of an unusual story. Um, we've been mates for nearly 20 years. Um, I am a comedy stage hypnotist and have done that for 17 of those years, traveling around the world, I suppose, performing a comedy hypnosis show, hypnotizing people, making them do crazy things just for giggles for their friends. Kennedy is an onstage mind reader. Um, anyone listening to this in the US would call it a mentalist, but a mind reader uh, going on stage, telling funny jokes and making people um, believe that he can use, well, he can read their minds, but it's not psychic. It's like body language, psychology, all of that stuff. So we both work in the sort of psychology driven end of the entertainment industry. If you like, I, my stuff's all about influence and, and um, dropping ideas into people's minds. Kennedy's stuff is all about plucking those thoughts out of their minds, understanding their behavior. So we've been friends because of that. And then, Years and years and years ago, we were both traveling around performing independently. And obviously you spend lots of time as an entertainer on your own, sometimes flying to the other end of the world, literally to mm. do an hour on stage and then fly back again. And so we get spent lots of time bored and, you know, speaking, it's exactly the same, exactly the same deal. Lots of traveling, lots of sitting around on your own, waiting to find something else to do. And so we both totally independently without telling each other started like an online business. If you like Kennedy was mm. helping other entertainers to get more gigs. I was helping people who wanted to be stage hypnotists or were starting in that journey to do that. And basically selling our expertise and our courses online. And a big, big part of that we realized early on completely independently was that email marketing had to become uh, a really big part of that business. And one day I remember I said to Kennedy, mate, I've been doing this, this thing called email marketing. So I've got this thing called Aweber, the email marketing platform. <laughs> and at the, at the time, I think it was probably the only one, like it was definitely one of the first. And I said, I've got this thing called Aweber and Kennedy was like, so have I, how, like how bizarre is that? That we'd both just totally gone down this separate route. Um, we were like closet entrepreneurs, I suppose. And uh, <laughs> that was closet entrepreneurs. Clos yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's, it's, it's uh, a long time ago and it just, it set a light, this love and this passion for wanting to get really good at email marketing. It was our favorite way of selling stuff. Beautiful that you know sort of and, and and isn't it magic how people are kind of put together you know sort of it was like you've been bumping into each other again Kelly's and my story I, I have to say this to everyone listening when when we first heard of you and then obviously we do like to check people out because we only work with like valued people and uh, when we had this conversation it was just the most ridiculous you wanted to be well you didn't want to be a fly on the wall in this conversation at all because it was just we were kind of all finishing each other's sentences and Rob's now been thrown into the mix. So I'm sort of glad I'm, I, I'm a little bit scared for when the four of us actually get together because so far it's only been three. Rob was missing from our very first conversation and now there's this conversation. So, so we shall see what happens when the four of us get together. Um, magic, I'm sure. Um, and, uh, <laughs> and, uh, these lads sound fab. Uh, so, so far, so good as far as the, um, uh, the, the, this goes so 
given your love for email, obviously you've you've taken that. I mean, I you both do your respective careers still uh, in different guises, uh, mm -hmm. which is good. Um, but you're also doing this and building a community. So so let me ask you this. Obviously, a Weber <laughs> was oh, a little while ago that moment. What are the changes that you've seen in marketing, sort of over the years? that affect how people, you know, how people communicate and also how often people should communicate? Because I know you've got some def definite ideas on this. And hold on to your hats, everyone watching, because you may not like it. Yeah, no, you, you, this may be challenging for some people, I think. Um, you know, I think one of the, th the big changes that has definitely happened in the way that we all communicate the way we the way we all sell the way that we all market ourselves is we know no one's ever liked being sold to ever no that's, that's never been the thing it's not that's not a new thing that whole thing that like sales speakers say about no one likes to be sold to anymore we never bloody did we never like to be sold to but we've always loved buying right that's and that's that cliche old sales um thing so for some reason, though, um, be, and, I th and I think the reason probably is that marketers break everything and they ruin everybody's games, is we think that when we do email marketing, our job is to decide, okay, today I'm going to sell this thing. This is the thing I'm going to sell, this product, this course, this presentation, because that's the thing. And I'm going to bang people over their head with that offer because now is my time that I want to sell it. The problem is nobody cares. <laughs> You're so right. And what we have to do instead is we have to use our marketing and we have to use our communications, whether it's, and it's all of your marketing, it's your social marketing, it's your email marketing, it's your PR, it's, it's all that stuff. So that you can show up every single day across various platforms so that at the moment that people are ready to buy, you're there. So email marketing specifically is not about, hey, I'm ready to sell something now, so I'm going to show up, which is how most of us have done email marketing. It's like, oh, I've got an offer now. I've got a new thing. I've got something to talk about. I've got something to sell. Now I'm going to email my list. I'm going to do a launch. I'm going to, I'm going to have a campaign for it. And there's a place for doing launches. And there's definitely, I mean, campaigns, and we'll get on to why campaigns are important later. But what we need to do, what we need to realize is we need to be communicating all the time so that at the moment when people are ready to buy, we have built trust, we've built authority, we've built an understanding of what we actually offer because one of the biggest reasons people don't buy from us is because they don't know all the things that we can do for them. So, so if we just communicate more often, we'll be there when they're ready to buy. That's the biggest change in marketing, I think. And I think, you know, sort of like, so relating that through, because I agree with everything that you're saying, and Brian's actually saying, you know, build relationships, don't sell. But I love this point about the fact that, and, you know, the honoring of um, the fact that your potential client or even the client that is already in your sphere is only ready when they're ready. And I, I, I love this whole, when you are present on a regular basis, they then go, oh yeah, that's right. These guys harp on about this. Because I think, I think a lot of speakers, authors, and coaches are, you know, keep themselves a best kept secret because they don't let themselves be known about uh, out there. And that, you know, that's a disaster waiting to happen because actually the goodness of people who are wanting to literally change the world through, you know, whether that's tangible, tangible, conceptual, practical, theoretical kind of things that they're dropping in, if they're not actually communicating on a regular basis, they miss the opportunity to do so. And that's why, you know, I love your, um, uh, email daily, uh, and, and, you know, sort of the, the, the whole thing around that. So when you present that as a concept to people, what are some of the objections that people throw at you with that? And how oh, do you so, easy on I mean, them? Obviously I want to play with that bit. We, we are saying we email daily, like we email 365 days of the year and sometimes twice in one day. And Four times in one day has been known has been known. And the other terrifying thing is, and, and, and this is, it feels like one of those terrible, cheesy presentation tactics is in what, what percentage of those emails do, do, should we sell in is one of the objections we get. It's like, well, okay, that's great. I'm going to send them to content. I'm going to send people to, to podcasts and, and, and lives and my Facebook group and blog posts. 
oh, when should I sell? And we say, 100% of the time. We sell in 100% of those emails. I mean, I'll let Rob take it from there, really. Please. So one of the big problems that I think people suffer from when they think about emailing their list is they think, without intending to, you automatically think that I send emails in order to build relationships, sure, but definitely in order to make sales. And therefore, that thing that I'm doing by sending that email is serving me as a, as a, a speaker, a coach, an expert, an author. Mm -hmm. It's serving me but it's not serving the people that I'm sending the email to. In other words, we feel bad. The only reason, the only reason on earth you could feel bad about sending an email every day is thinking that it's bothering the people you're sending the email to rather than serving them. And if you just switch that round to say, well, actually, how can I make it so that the email I send is valuable and useful? Because if it's not, you should never be sending the email ever. You should never send one email in your entire lifetime if you think it's going to bother somebody. So sure. I think if we switch that mindset to know that actually it's perfectly okay for me to send an email to somebody every single day, because mm -hmm. every single day I want to, to quote a friend of ours, Paul Moore, every single day I want to make an impact on their life. I email every time I want to make, Paul says, I email every time I want to make an impact and I want to make an impact every day. That's beautiful. And so every single day, your people have, your, your subscribers, your audience have still got problems. They've still got questions. They've still got concerns. They still need inspiration. They still need hope. They still need answers to their questions. They still need entertainment. We probably lean slightly too heavily on the entertainment card uh, mm -hmm. with our, with our emails. Nothing wrong with it. It, it works, but we, we probably could do with, evening that out a little bit, but they still want entertainment. They want hope. They want inspiration. They want answers. And you've got all of those things and they want them every single day. And, and, and that little list that you've just gone through, is that kind of the smattering that people might be looking to put into their emails as they communicate? How much is somebody's own personal style kind of at play here? And, and there is a couple of questions that I'll then ask after that. Sure. I mean, personal style is really important. And one of the things that people say to us is, oh, it's okay for you because you're both funny or your, your emails are entertaining. And mm -hmm. what you got to remember is there's different types of personality and they're all okay. Like Rob's funny, but you might be really profound or you might just be really quiet and subdued and thoughtful. All of those things are great because what we've got to remember is people are not on our email list for any other reason than they want the answer to a problem. And if you're not giving them the answer to that problem, then you're deserving the very reason that they're yeah. on your email list. If, I've, if I don't know how to lose the weight that I want to lose, if you're like in that world, and I, I'm going to join your email list. But if you don't tell me that for a month, I'm going to be furious and fat. <laughs> So I'm not going to be I'm not going to be happy with either of those things. So there's different types of value you can give in emails. Mm. We'll give you our sort of our sort of list of different types of value. One of them is entertainment. There is value in being purely entertaining, definitely. Another one is solutions to problems. So that is literally you want to be, you want to get this outcome. That's why you're on my list. Here's a solution. Another is inspiration. People want to feel inspired. I think as speakers and coaches and authors, we understand the importance and the value in insp inspiring people, giving them that, that moment of, uh, of inspiration. Answers to questions. So they've got, we've got questions. How do I do this? What should I eat? How should I do that thing? What should I do that? Why should I do this? Answers to questions. A really big one that almost nobody does, and if you do this, you literally like, streets ahead of most people is addressing the things that your audience doesn't even know they don't know <laughs> right so if those questions that, so so and it sounds like really meta but for example our accountant graham smashing guy wears great ties doesn't match them with his shirt very well but he's a great guy <laughs> and and graham could send us an email every single day with a little tidbit of information of of something I didn't even know about in the world of tax and the world of investment. Think, think about how many things you can claim back through your company you didn't even know were there till your accountant told you about them and came a compensation that you could have been doing that thing for 10 years. I would want that email. I would totally want that email. And it's Absolutely. there at the, you know, sort of it's there in your head, isn't it? It is. Another is um, another thing that people really want, um, apart from knowing what they don't even know they don't know, is some hope. Some people at some points in life, in the world, what's going on, just need a little bit of hope. Yeah. 
They just need to feel like there's something at the end of the tunnel. And also another is connection, that they're actually not alone. There's other people out there. They're connected to something. They're hearing about other people in this community. And like we said, entertainment as well. So there's a bunch of different things. And don't pick one. Don't mm. go, oh, my sounds like that be entertaining no and rob said we do rely on entertainment way more than we should it's natural for us it's kind of what we sort of just default into really you should spice it up with all those things because different people in your list are really going to to identify with different things but also if you if you do entertainment all the time and then like we do and then rob tomorrow sends out something that's really about hope and that deeply connects with emotionally that's going to mm out so deeply on a psychological level um, that, that you're going to get a much more uh, impactful connection with people. So that's the, that's the content, really. It, it makes complete sense. And it, it's really interesting because one of the things, uh, so, you know, with the, the trainings that Kelly and I do on a regular basis, I'm just actually going to pop a link in here around, you know, because there is a, a, a link between email and the connection or the communication that we do within our community both on the page but also in the group and so we did a, a training a while back uh, called how to create consistent content um which is really around the the themes actually i've completely done the wrong one hang on a minute uh not con consistent content it's number 59 it's not number 42 hold that thought uh the 42 is the answer to everything you know that right uh but yeah this is me trying to run the show and and do this all together but we actually did this training on the six types of content that really engage your audience and i think it's exactly what you're saying it's this how do you get a blend of um of that that mix that in that, that takes into account who you be who you are but also that actively engages different types of people in your audience because whilst we all have an avatar an ideal client of sorts we still also you know they are still individuals who respond in slightly different ways so so yeah there's there's always a challenge so you know even if that's the one thing you take away from this training today and there'll be many uh, so far it certainly looks like it um it's to actually just go back and look at what style am I most fond of using and am mm. I using some of these others that you are actually kind of suggesting as well. Right. Um, and the easiest way of doing any of these things, of of, do, of of applying any of these pieces of value, like there's just mm. one simple trick to the whole thing. And we're all about systemizing and finding out how you simplify stuff because when, you know, we, we're good at this, but we're only good at it because we simplify it. And that's honestly the truth. We're all about frameworks that simplify things. That's what we teach in league, that's what we teach in our groups. And the big secret to all of this is something you're already great at as a, as a person who's a coach, and that is telling stories. If you just tell stories about any one of those things, a funny story, entertaining, an inspiring story, inspiration, a story that gives hope, Hello, it gives hope. So literally all we do, all and all we want people to do is send an email that people really enjoy receiving because it's a story that gives value and also builds a relationship, builds up a three-dimensional picture of you because you're telling stories about your life. Yeah. You're telling stories about, and people say, where do the stories come from? Well, <laughs> Rob, you've, you've got really simple strategy about where you get the stories from. Yeah. So I use the stories of my everyday life and they're not even interesting stories. They're not even good stories. They're things that I'm doing and you have to train yourself. We have a catchphrase. It should become a hashtag that trends everywhere around the world. That is, there's an hashtag, there's an email in that, right? With our catchphrase is there's an email in that. And so literally, like so four times a day. For example, the, the the reason I think that that catchphrase actually started only last uh, November. We were traveling down to speak at an event in um, Northampton and the train journey from Newcastle to Northampton is a bit of a pain. And it was a particular pain on this day because there were lots of cancellations and therefore we missed a bunch of trains and all the rest of it. Anyway, so we arrived at a train station in Doncaster and we had to get on a train and that we ended up having to just patch trains together in order to get to where we needed to be. And so this required us to get a train from, I think it was Sheffield to Doncaster or Doncaster to Sheffield, either way, a little two carriage or three carriage train. We hopped on the train and we had, this is just going to show you how trendy we are. We had ourselves a first class ticket because it was cheaper than a normal class ticket. Um, we got on the train and Kennedy said to the train guard on this little three, tr three carriage train, so excuse me, mate, where's first class? And the train guard said, it's all first class, mate, and moved on. And we thought that was hilarious. <laughs> what a brilliant response. It's all first class, mate. 
So we just had a laugh about ourselves and we looked at each other and almost simultaneously went, there's an email in that. Oh, and so brilliant. that's, that's where our new that there's an email in that has come from. So now every single day of the week, something happens. I, I mean, probably four or five things happen. I get annoyed because I can only, because most of the time we only send one email a day. I get annoyed that I have three ideas today and I can't use them for tomorrow. Uh -huh. I have to use one tomorrow, one the day after one after the, the day after that. And I'm talking yeah. simple things like the fact that yesterday's email was about the fact that I ate a great big meal. I felt so full, but I immediately wanted to eat chocolate cake. Now you might think <gasps> that's got absolutely nothing whatsoever to do with email marketing. It will by the time I'm finished with it. <laughs> Here's an example, right? So I ordered, I ordered, I ordered this right on Amazon, right? Right. Yeah. Just one of them squeezy horn things, right? Squeezy horn yeah. thing. And it arrived, and as you can see, it there's work. no squeezy thing. No, there's no, no, no horn, no honk, nothing at all. <laughs> and that was an email the other day as well, because what happened for me is that uh, this arrived. I thought that's terrible. Ordered another one. Got another one, by the way. That one works. I'm not honking. It's too loud. But and, and then actually, the the, the squeezy horn that doesn't work. Give me an idea for a piece of material for my show. So Brilliant. then I turn into a lesson around actually stuff that's rubbish or stuff that's not very good. What's it actually can be insp inspiring. And, and there is as an opportunity everywhere, which is a really simple email message. So literally that's something that happened just this, just this week. There's literally email content and there are stories and everything you do. And all you've got to do is start tuning your brain in to actually seeing them because they are happening. People are saying, oh, but I'm stuck at home at the moment. So am I. This, this got delivered to my door. I'm having yeah. conversations. There'll be something to do with something that happened during this, this session that I'm sure will turn, will turn into an email, into a story. There is content literally everywhere. It, it's really interesting because I now understand why I made a quote mistake by actually putting in the how to create consistent content training in because of course it's not a mistake because you know and this is the like valuedness between you guys and us is that we you know we say exactly the same literally in our change maker central membership uh, I literally this morning I you know in that news feed that you do Facebook is very good at putting a little ad in that you go oh but I snapped a little picture of that and I popped it through to one of our people and just went here's what you could do with this because you're right it is a brain attunement around how can I use this to serve? And that's usually the question that's in my head, which is how can I use what just happened to serve? You know, <laughs> I am absolutely certain that my very fast transit from sitting out in the garden to coming back into the office because the wind was too strong because I really wanted to do this from the garden, but it, it just wasn't quite there. I am pretty certain I'm going to turn that into content very shortly. And I think that's the thing that everyone can take away from this, which is actually you've got something to say all the time. As a speaker, author, or coach, there is always something that you can be sharing that is of value to people. But here's the question I really want to ask as a result of that is, is that what, what are the mistakes that people, you know, bringing it back to email rather than social content in this way, what are the mistakes that people most often make and what impact does it have on their results? All right. So, I mean, the first one, is, I'll give us a sort of starter, is, um, and it sort of answers all the questions that just came in as well. Is oh, yeah, the what if you're rubbish that, at writing? Yeah, right? what, yeah. What if you what if you're not very good at writing? Well, I'm dyslexic, and I write an email five days a week, and I have done for years. And and the reason I started writing a daily email, as well as uh, being a connection, a way of connecting with my audience, is because I thought, well. I'm going to just prove this whole thing wrong. So I'm, I'm, I want to become a better writer and a really good way to become a better writer is to write every single day. So yes, you might start off not the world's greatest writer, but the other good news is you don't have to be because if you read our emails, if I mean, and I know that you might be on our list, we don't write like storytellers or authors. We write exactly how we speak. And actually... If you're a really good writer, I would see that as a disadvantage because you're probably using technical jargon. You're probably a technical writer who's using some lovely flowery words. <laughs> Actually, that stuff doesn't connect with anybody. If yeah. you just go, my, I mean, for one of my lists that I write to daily, I'll often, they're mostly men on my list. So, so my avatar for that list is, is a man in his sort of mid fifties. So I'll, and, and, and British. So I'll say, mate, this, the, 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 and I'll say like things like, 
And you'll never guess what. She went absolutely bananas. It's literally, I think, what am I thinking? How would I tell that to my friend? How would I would do it if, if I was voice messaging it to, to Rob? Literally write the way you speak and yeah. genuinely consciously break the rules. Like yeah. you want to make these emails it's so good that it will make your English teacher's toes curl. Start sentences <laughs> with and. Put a new paragraph in when there bloody well shouldn't be one. Like literally... <laughs> If our English teachers ever saw our email, they would be sick in their own hands. It wouldn't be pretty. What, but what we're really dealing with is we're dealing with connecting with people on that level where they can hear our voice in their head. And that's the comment we get the yeah. most. So yeah. it's, it's a really, really powerful thing to do. Okay. And My Rob, emails I know are you've not... got something to add. And then, yeah. and then can we tackle Fiona's other bit around being dyslexic too, but too wordy and needs to be shorter and sharper. So if you can help help her out with that as well. But Rob, tell us what you were going to say. This will actually address that conveniently. Great. Um, there you go. There's two, there's two techniques that I use here. The first one is that my emails are almost bullet points. Like when you, when you look at an email, the, the sentences are quite often only have four words in them. And that is done by design. Like I, they're styled and, and intended that way. So for example, I'm just thinking the one that I talked about, about doing the cake yesterday. Um, it started by saying, I love cake. First name was the opening sentence. And then the second sentence went on to say, actually, I'm one of those people who could stuff my face with a meal, dot, 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 new line. And then that starts with dot, dot, dot. And I finish that sentence. So they're intentionally shortened down so that people can, without any effort at all, can't help but to consume the content. Yeah, like that a makes sense. And so I think that's the first thing. Uh, and the set, and so that, that's a little thing to work on, which I think will help Fiona with, with making stuff less wordy. Mm. But the second thing is that we quite often just start writing just start writing and and what what you start writing is not what's going to go out to the to the list but just start writing and then go back to the beginning and just delete the first couple of paragraphs and most of the time it won't particularly affect the meaning so i am I love i'm a natural i'm a natural inbuilt storyteller to the point that i like the famously in our office i like the detail too much so i'll rather than say it really rained heavily on Wednesday. I'll say, I woke up on Wednesday morning. Was it six? I think it was six o'clock. And then the, there was a crow outside and I went to the, I like the details. So a lot of the time I have to just teach myself to trim the whole beginning off and realize, start with the action. The, 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 there's a beautiful, there is actually a really, really, uh, I'll see if I can dig out the quote because I won't be able to remember it right now. But but there is uh, something about, you know, sort of writing loads, but but being a brilliant editor is actually the, the the trick to it. I'll, I'll see if I can dig it out. There, there was definitely I think the other um, big thing, well, just to, yeah. to highlight on what Rob said there, is one of the things you really want to do to make your email shorter mm. is is you want to start in the action. So by deleting those first two paragraphs where you're saying, I woke yeah. up this morning and this thing was happening, all, the, all that first one or two paragraphs is, is you as a writer getting warmed up. But yeah. actually, if, for example, a couple of weeks ago, my sister's car broke down. She called us up and said, um, will you come and help me out? So we jump in the car, we drove down to this little layby where she pulled in. And if you've ever had to try and push a stopped car, it's really hard. Like it's you push hard. and you push and you push. And then eventually it moves and then keeping it moving is much easier. Well, our brains are exactly the same. Getting it moving takes a lot of energy and it takes a lot of concentration from the reader. If you're just trying to get it moving. Instead, do what all the big action films do. The beginning of the beginning scene of every James Bond film, every Mission Impossible film is already in the action. The same way you do when you're speaking, the same way you do. You start in the action because now we've got tempo. Now we're in what we call in motion. For and sure. that's what you want to do because you, you, you get to keep people moving. You get to get them excited. The big thing here, though, that I think if you take anything away from this, I know we've got a few more things to talk about, is... There seems to be this crazy belief that writing emails is a different skill to what you already do. Hmm. And we're doing ourselves out of a job here in that we teach <laughs> email marketing, but it isn't. It's exactly yeah. the same skill you use. When you write that piece that you write as an author, when you tell that story in a coaching situation, when you tell those stories and, and narrate those experiences as a speaker, you are using exactly the same techniques of conviction, of compassion, of excitement, all those things that you do 
you you just repurpose them into the written word. Nice. And if you need, if, if writing is not for you because, I don't know, you've got broken fingers or something, then there's no <laughs> excuse. You can speak into a microphone and for $1 per minute, you can use something like rev.com and they will transcribe it for you and then pay a VA who might even do that for you and they'll send it out. Like, there's literally no reason not to do it. It's am- it's absolutely amazing. We we're, we're also big fans of uh, otter.ai. Yeah, uh, otter's is, great. You know, cuz cuz actually when you're on the go uh, alongside Rob's kind of catcher story in in its moment, you can literally do that um uh, then brilliant. and there. Rob, I absolutely love the start with the um you know, start in the middle, start, you know, get rid of the kind of the fluff that happens. But if you need to warm up, then do. I I I've recently um <laughs> weirdly Possibly. I've recently started all of the business books and uh, I have it on good authority that I have 25 boxes of books uh, that are all packed up, ready to be moved. So uh, so that's interesting. But most of those books, I actually start reading in the middle weirdly because that's actually where the meat on the bones is if you like and then I can when I'm interested and excited about it then I actually go back and actively uh then you know start from the very beginning which is interesting so so that whole piece around cut to the chase is a really big piece and of course uh <laughs> It wouldn't be one of these if we didn't mention the word avatar or indeed if I was to say the four intentions. But if you are having trouble writing some emails, have a go at a four intentions. It's number 15 on the list of the the trainings that we've got in the files because the four intentions will absolutely allow you to get to that action piece, which is the piece that serves them rather than serves you. And I think, Rob, that's what I was really hearing is that, you know, you need to get the bits that serve you out of the way so that you can truly serve them straight away by by starting in the right place. And that really works. Totally. I love Uh, that. Yeah, it's really good. So, uh, <laughs> if there was one thing, you know, sort of like this whole, because I'm pretty certain that that I'm going to keep reminding people about this whole emailing once a day. Mm. What? Like, what is it that people could do to just give that a go? Like, what is it that people could actively say to themselves or do that allows them to do it? Because you've told us why we need to, but make us do it. I think one of the really interesting things that you can do at this point is to, uh, so so the first step is, is actually just to increase the number of emails you send. If you currently send one every three months, then jumping to daily is going to be hard for you. And it's going to be a real shock to the audience as well. So I think sure. it's currently, is to figure out what your step up is. And if you can get yourself from once a week to three times a week, or once a month to once a week, something like that, or even once a month to two or three times a week is what we've seen, then that would be great. If you currently send weekly, get to daily as quickly as possible. But a really good way to do it is to do it as a challenge once for 30 days and tell your list you're going to do it. So I think Kennedy, years ago, a long time before we formed a business together, did you do a blogging challenge or something or a video challenge where you had to blog every day? I did a vlog. Yeah, I did a daily vlog on the way up, on the lead up to an event. I forgot all about that. Yes, so I did a a daily challenge, yeah. Right. So I think the way around that is to tell your list it's going to happen. So nice. you know this thing, I'm as a part of partly for me and partly for you. So partly for me, the the speaker, coach, and author, or partly for you and partly for you, the subscriber. I'm going to send an email every day for the next thirty days. It's a challenge to me to test my tenacity of doing it, to test my my uh, my writing skills, to become a better writer, but also because I've got thirty days worth of new messages that I want to share with you. If okay. that's totally not your bag, you can unsubscribe. Um, and if you if you do like the idea, then great, hang around, you're going to be fine. You could even get people to opt in specifically for that. So if you want to receive these 30 days of emails, click this link. You'll be amazed how many people do. Oh, yeah, I like getting your email once a week. I'd love to get the email every day. And they click on. And uh, that way, if at the end of it, you found it really, really hard and you think, oh, keeping this daily is going to be tricky. I'm going to maybe have to do three times a week or something. Yeah. You can, you've got the room to drop back down, but dropping from daily back to three times a week is is fairly easy. Whereas actually, I think what most people will find is they get to the end of a 30 day challenge and they go, it's much easier than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> yeah, I, I, it's also about picking, making it a habit. So Rob and I, te- I think Rob still does it at the same time. But anyway, I write mine at 6 a.m. Right, mm-hmm. every day. I'm an early person. I'm an early morning person. So I get up after the first cup of tea, while I'm still drinking it, I'll, I'll, 
write the email. And literally, might be too much information for you, terrible mental picture for you, but I'm in the shower, I'm washing my hair in the morning, and I'm thinking, what happened yesterday? Oh, that, that was good. What was that? Okay, four things happened yesterday. Which one's the most interesting of the three or four? And it might be just that they're all boring, but you have to pick the least boring. That's, that's the game, right? <laughs> what happened? And then you, you're going to write the story about that. The other thing is, you don't, and almost we never, almost never know what the lesson or the transition to the sales pitch is going to be mm. before we've written the story. So you don't need to have thought, this is the story about what happened yesterday, and this is how it's a lesson for you as a, as a, as a subscriber, and this is how it, tra it transitions. You don't need to know that. That's trying to think too much ahead. And people always say to us, oh, I need to spend some time planning my email marketing. You don't. You just, you're actually, by planning, you're probably just putting off doing the work almost mm. most of the time, right? So let's just do it. Nice. So what I do instead is just start writing the story. Yesterday, this thing happened. Remember, I, I don't have to send it. It's not being broadcast live as I'm typing it. That's the great thing about email. You choose what to send and when to send it. So you start and you're typing it, and then you go, oh, now I think for my audience, that means, and then I, can, I'm, I found the lesson as I'm writing the story. That's really, nice. really important. The other nice. thing to mention, sort of the opposite of what Rob said, is if you're going to suddenly just whack up the um, – the frequency to three times a week daily to do this little challenge. You could put an opt out link, which is specific for this. So you say you put in the bottom PS, I'm currently partway through a 30 day sprint where I'm emailing every single day. Beautiful. If this is too much, you click here and you won't get it. It's all cool. So you're not actually going to knock your list. Basically, you're not going to break things. You could, you can good. still, can still um, feel that as a safety net that you're not going to just lose people. But then that does bring the question. If they're on your list because they've got a problem and you're showing up every day to solve that problem and they leave your list, do they have a strong enough problem to ever want to do business with you? Fair enough. Yeah, really, really good. And Rob, were you going to say something in response yeah, to that? Yeah, just one of the really easy things that you want to do is I bet everybody listening to this has like a list of general things that they preach within your niche, within your market. So ours are email more often, have these core sequences. We've got a bunch of core sequences you want to have wrapped around that. Campaigns work, single emails don't. We've got a bunch of like maxims, as we call them, our rules for email marketing. There's mm. hundreds of them. And so the best thing to do is start with 5, 10, 20, 3, however many you can think of, and just have them on a list. And when you're writing a story, you'll say, you get to the end of your story and you look across your list and say, which of those most fits the sort of moral Beautiful. of the story I've just told? And then and, mold into that. And, and the bit that I want to clarify here, when you say sell in every email, you don't necessarily mean sell a product necessarily it could also be uh, or, or is that true to, to tell people more about that well uh so we do sell a product in every single email um Beautiful. The way that we do it is there's a couple of different there's a couple of different models or templates I suppose we follow the first one the, the first one the one that we use the most is interesting subject line that gets people to open them that's something related to the the story or the lesson or both mm -hmm. then you start you tell a story and usually the story is probably a maximum most of the time it's probably a maximum of maybe six or seven lines and a lot of the time those are just single lines uh then you merge that into a story so to give you an example my email yesterday about liking cake was talking about the fact it doesn't matter how full my stomach is i always want cake a bit like your subscribers email inboxes it doesn't matter how full their inboxes are they always they always want more good emails in them nice. so that there's that it's it's a it's a it's a rubbish transition but it proves the point it like says this is the story that happened to me yeah. This is the lesson for you, and this is what you can take out of that. So then I'll say in that, in that, here's three things that you can do to make sure that subscribers want to get your emails. And it's just bullet point, bullet point, bullet point. It's very much teaching. It's what we call sort of soft teaching. It's valuable. Yeah. It gives them inspiration, gives them ideas, but it doesn't give them all of the nuts and bolts and how-tos because that's what they pay for. Yeah. And at exactly. the end, it's a very lighthearted transition that says, listen, if you want our help to do everything we just talked about, the yeah. best place to start is the leak. Click it, find out more, and then that takes them to the page. That's beautiful. Really, really lovely. And and so I think there's probably a lot of 
and hope at the same time that's coming out for people. So I would love to know how you're actually all going to get on with it. The people who are watching live, but also the people who are, you know, watching later. Uh, please let us know how you're getting on with things and do ask the questions. I'm aware that we're in danger of making this one of the one of the longer ones, which I kind of knew it was going to be. And, and in some ways. I would love for Kelly to be here. She was gutted that she couldn't be. But I think with the four of us actually going on about things that we all love, um, it would probably be a little bit of a nightmare. And I've had to rein myself in quite a lot and I'm um, feeling quite good about that right now. Well done. Uh, well done. So uh, I have already, uh, in answer to Brian's uh, sort of request, I have already kind of popped a link into your group. But do you want to just uh, tell us what, what what is the best way to be in touch with you? Is it to come into the group? Is there anything else? Yeah, I mean, you'll be you might have questions right now about how all this stuff applies to you, or you might want some advice on what what we would do in your situation, depending on what mm -hmm. phase you're at and stuff like that. Totally get that. We don't want to leave you high and dry. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we've got a, a free Facebook group. You're welcome to come and join it. If you go to Facebook and you just search for the email marketing show okay. community. It will yeah. come up or there's a link right here as well. There you go. Just as I speak, there you go. Or yeah. So just come and join us in there. Yeah. And uh, what's great is we're in there every single day, probably too much more than we should be. We're probably getting work done. And, um, and, uh, but also there's some really good group members as well. Who've got lots of different perspectives who may very well be in a parallel market to you, got experience too. So that's the best sure. way. For sure. Uh, Wendy's saying thank you so much. Uh, Fiona's just popped a tiny little question in there, which I did want to want to just tackle because partly because, you know, we are big fans of metrics, big fans of measuring. And so I love that the questions come. Uh, she said, what's your conversion rates? We question. actually have. We actually have a really simple thing that we track. Uh, we don't track a lot of the stuff that most people track. But I mean, we do track it because you can't not like open rates and click through rates. You, you don't have to do anything. Obviously, the systems just track it. We don't pay that much attention to them. We pay attention to how much money we earn per subscriber on our list per month. Beautiful. So that's what we're looking to aim for. So there was an old metric years and years and years ago that said you really want to try and earn $1 per subscriber per month. It was like the general universal metric years ago. And most people struggle to get that. <laughs> we actually... Um, we actually do better than that. So uh, yeah, our, our number is how much money do we make for every subscriber on our list? Because that that means that if you know that metric, that means that you know how much you can afford to spend acquiring subscribers. That means you know all of that stuff in, in one metric. So that's, that's the one really that we pay good. attention to. Really good. I, I love a meta metric, but uh, don't get me started on that because then we'll be off and running. Uh, we'll take that into a private conversation where the four of us can actually geek out because Kelly would be most upset to miss out on that one. So um, I'm about to love and leave you right here. Uh, they they really seem to, everybody who's been listening uh, really seems to like you. I'm sure that you'll have a little spike in uh, people influxing from here, which would be hilarious because of course I show up in there and in in the connection hub in all sorts of ways so it's so it's all good um but i am just so grateful that you've shared your expertise uh with us and there is so much more where this came from um and i'm looking forward to doing an interview with you for our private members in a short while so i will catch up with you in a short while uh but say a bit everybody a productive effective and efficient week and thank you too for joining us all right have fun thanks for having us bye